streaming on a Friday. I am pretty excited for the weekend, I'll be honest about that. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And today I'm going to be just doing some 3D modeling. Oh, hello. There we go. And I'll do that with a new uh, a new project. I am trying to come up with a clever name. I don't have a clever name. Mm, clever names aren't that important, but I want to be clever. <laughs> trying so hard to be clever about it. Uh, right, but anyway, once I come up with the name, uh, what I'll be doing is taking this pie and using this digital um, caliper. It's got good enough accuracy. Hey, happy Friday, Mike. Hope you're doing well. Happy Friday indeed. I am looking forward to the weekend. Uh, not sure if you heard it. Uh, today I'm taking this pie and measuring it up and just uh, giving myself a, a close to realistic 3D model of it so that I can design cases and stuff for it um, uh, in, in the near future. Um, I don't know, the, the trick with modeling something is always, uh, sounds like a fun day. Yeah, it should be good. Uh, it's a little easier of a day because it's measuring and typing in, like, like it's not too complicated, right? It's, it's kind of like, I mean, just make the thing you already see. I don't have to make hard decisions. The only difficult decision I have to make is the level of detail that I actually want to start including in the models. Fridays are meant to be easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's exactly the plan. Is I don't want to. I don't want to put myself through the ringer <laughs> today. So, so I'll go ahead and do this, which I want it, which I need to do anyway. It's not quite a chore, but it's not completely novel. May as well do it on a stream, right? Can enjoy that, hang out with chat, have a good time, and get something useful done. Uh, just call this R pi, because why not, you know, why not? Let's also, um, let's get things set up so I can, what I want to do as well, I, so I'm going to be modeling it via OpenSCAD, but I want to make sure I can export it cleanly to FreeCAD, so I'm going to get that bit of stuff all set up. It shouldn't be too hard. I'll just basically have a REPL ready and the exporter, I can run it as need, as, uh, as need be. Blech. But before I get there, let's open up the moth design and copy the basics of this. So we've got a basis 
Oops. I uh, should build a little script for myself so that I don't have to copy and paste stuff like that all the time. And I'll get there one day, but that's a problem for another day as well. Or problem, project. Uh, so here we'll do rpy namespace rpy slash design should be fine as a file name really no issues there um, all of this is irrelevant to this particular project so I get rid of it for now rpy.watcher should hopefully uh, work. I think it will. Oh, how much further did I get on flapping the wings yesterday? Oh yeah, um, uh, where's the quickest result? I finished something and I put a post on my Twitter. It's uh, still something tweakable but I wanted to show I wanted to show the result anyway so let me pull out pull out the result of that for a second um, I think it's this one. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is a weird resolution image. Uh, I don't know why things are so slow on my computer. I took this picture <laughs> to put on my Instagram so you could see the source, so you could see the tattoo. And I tried to make it look like the moth had landed <laughs> on my hand, you know? <laughs> a little silly looking. And I just went with... Um, I didn't do any easing on the uh, on the flap. I just went back to the default sign. In my mind, it's like you know how if you see a sometimes a moth or a big beetle or something landed on something and they just kind of are like opening their wings and closing them, like they're not flying. They're just kind of relaxing and moving. That's the that was the idea here. You can see a slight hitch at uh, the up right there uh, that's because it's a five second clip that I just tripled and I just used FFmpeg to stitch three copies and I guess there's an extra frame at the end and start of the whole cycle so it doesn't look exactly right when you stitch them together but uh, as a first example of turning a 2d tattoo into a 3d animation pretty good Technically, this is CGI. <laughs> My childhood dream of uh, <laughs> learning how to do uh, com uh, 3D computer animation has come true. <laughs> yeah, so I made a little a little uh, tweet, a little Twitter post about that. When will I see the version where it comes off the arm where the tattoo actually is and flies away? That So I thought of that and I'd have to... So the thought that came up with that is it'd be cool to have um, uh, kind of do a two-stage sort of thing, right? Where I make the moth animation do something in, in 3D space. And then I overlay it onto a video where I've used something like OpenCV to say track the approximate orientation and position of this so that I can synchronize the like I can kind of overlay things almost like um, you know those snapchat and Instagram filters where they can track your face and put a 3d th mask over the face kind of like that but on on my arm here and then make it like morph and take off that would be so cool that's a different project, but I have some of the assets ready to go, right? So uh, that has crossed my mind. 
I need to uh, I need to take these things one step at a time, of course. But these these experiments are just so fun to me. It'd be really cool to see. I I know, right? It would be it'd be a good project. I love doing this sort of thing. And like, there's no there's no real tangible, quote unquote, benefit to it. It's just so satisfying to have an idea and then figure out how to make it look like what you want. I, I'm pleased with it. If you get to that point, I'll learn how to do audio stuff to dub over the reading rainbow theme. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Okay, let's uh, get that in a working state. Uh, our pi. This is not a moth. It's our pi. Let's also reload this. So when I save this, it creates the directory. Now let's head into that directory. If I list this out. Let's just make sure design and watcher are the two files that I that make sense to have there. Whoops. I also had this um, tangential idea with that moth. I could I could use that as a kind of uh, I could build a few different animations. And have it as like a, a stream starting soon animation, that kind of thing. Uh, don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable. When is the subscribe button coming? Uh, when I, uh, <laughs> no, that's that's a fine question. It's coming as soon as I can get it. Um, so I still have to <laughs> have to sit down and and do the tax forms and. Uh, I'll, I'll fully admit, I think it's like, I, I don't know what, what it is, but I have this massive mental block, anxiety, if you will, with any kind of paperwork. And that's just, uh, it's a silly thing, because it's like, it's not that hard, right? It's just a thing I never want to do. And so I, I put it off and put it off. But it's on the list this weekend and I'm going to force myself to get it done. I'm going to force myself to put in that app. And then after that, I actually don't know. It could be like as quick as a week. It could be as short as two to three weeks or, or part of me. It could be, it, it's like a week to a month ish, depending on how things go. But, uh, I'm glad you're enthusiastic about it and I'm glad you're keeping me honest. <laughs> Cause I should do it, right? Like the options available, I should I should make things all good and proper. Got my prime sub ready whenever it becomes available. Okay, Mike, that's just the incentive I need. <laughs> I'm not even being sarcastic. That is actually, uh, it. I mean, first of all, it's super appreciated, right? It's it's never a requirement, but now that I know there's at least there's at least one person <laughs> waiting for the button. Now, now, now I have incentive to do it. So thank you for that. <laughs> Just the kick in the pants that I need. So I've got this RPI thing going here. Let's launch the watcher. Here to help. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm sure I've said it a bunch, but like the support you're providing, the uh, the consistency of you showing up in chat is honestly, it's so cool. I I, I really do enjoy that. It's um, it's really fun. I, I it's one reason I love streaming in general is you get to interact with people in kind of a unique way, and it's just really cool to see uh, to see you uh, putting in the consistent uh, uh, care to to chat. Yeah, I, I love that. It's awesome. Anyone else who's tuned in as well now or in the future, whatever, it's all I love. I love the interaction with everyone. So it's great. All right. Um, let's launch the watcher our I don't want to get too gushy, right? But I do want to express appreciation as much as I can. <laughs> Uh, 
Is it gonna work? No. I forget. I always use M, uh, but it always gives me a warning that that's deprecated. So what's X? Um, eh, whatever. Old habits die hard. <laughs> when invoking, use capital M. Oh, that also errored out. Okay, well, let's work work on that a little bit. Anyone else uh, tuned in, by the way, feel free to uh, join in, talk in the chat about projects you're working on. If you have any questions as to what I'm doing, uh, don't be shy. I uh, enjoy answering questions and just chatting about whatever. Also, no pressure if you're not if you don't want to do any of that, that's totally cool too. Just glad people are here watching. All right. Uh, what went wrong with this? Oh, I didn't pass it. Of course, I have to pass it. Uh, let's see. The design file itself, CLJC, is what I want to pass to it, but I haven't actually put anything in there yet, so let's uh, uh, do this. We'll put a little stub thing in here. Sphere 20 is always a good place to start. <laughs> okay, so using this, if this works, it should um, start the watcher and compile the script on change into a SCAD file. And then if I open a new tab here, if I open something went wrong. Uh, let's see. Uh, what am I missing? This should work. One second here. Hmm. What's happening? Let's see. Oh, I must be watching a file that I think I'm watching the wrong file. I think I have to do it like this. Um, have to pass it the full path probably. So it's uh, source rpy design cljc. I think that might be what I was missing. All right, let's give that a shot. Oops. Okay, so if I do this, so it saved the change. The watcher is running. I think it should be watching the right file now. So now let's have a look. Here, rpy.scad is generated now. Okay, so that's working. So now I can open rpy.scad and we'll have a viewer that responds to file changes. Uh, gotta open. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
design rpy rpy.scad okay so we've got visual save there we go it's uh, responding to changes in the in here so that's good let's uh, change this color scheme back to a nord theme just just because i want to preferences this nord theme by the way is a custom theme like i went into the open scad install directory and made my own theme i also have one that's green screen that i use to chroma key out the background when i'm using ffmpeg to make animations um, so those are custom you have to add them in yourself all the others are uh, there's some decent looking defaults so it's all preference but I just like the Nord one it's good enough the background color kind of it's actually the wrong color it's it's darker than this Emacs color but anyway I digress it's close enough it looks okay and it'll do the trick now, uh, what I would like to do before I get too far into just making the RPI here, I want to just make sure that I can actually export to um, step files and open those up in FreeCAD appropriately. So I'll just do it with uh, cube and then I'll test it out. If I do I have this script CLJ2 step here. I should be able to run that on source RPI design. I think that'll work. I can't remember. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I could work on it. Let's see. Let's try this one more time. CLJ2 step of design.clJC. Dang. I uh, will have to fix that. Could not resolve symbol cube. Oh, I'm a bit surprised by this, to be honest. Um, let's see. Well, let's change this approach up just a bit then. No free CAD. Oh, I wonder if, so I installed, um, the newest free CAD. So you can install free CAD on Mac with brew install. Uh, but that installs, last time I checked, FreeCAD 0 0.18. Uh, but the newest is 0 0.19. And it, uh, according to uh, someone someone on Twitter, well, actually, FreeCAD News on Twitter mentioned that uh, 0.19 had stability improvements and things like that. So they recommended I update. Anyway, I did that. And I wonder if it, uh, or I guess it didn't, I have to update my path or something like that so that I can invoke it properly. But I will solve that problem later. What I'm wondering is actually if I can open an SCAD file directly. It's a dangerous game to play updating software. Yeah, you're telling me. I um, I restarted this computer, my, my uh, Mac here this morning, and I guess it had an update 
pending or something like that. It took like 45 minutes <laughs> to reboot, which is ridiculous. It should not take that long. Um, I This computer isn't that new anymore, I guess. It's not uh, performing the way I thought. It's nearing Windows update times. I know, I was surprised. I was really shocked by that. and. So what I don't know is if it's because I skip updates and so it was actually a bunch of updates happening in one go or if it's genuinely just taking that long. I, I'm not completely sure. This could be a, uh, what's that called? A, a pebcac problem exists between chair and keyboard. <laughs> it could be, it could be a me issue. <laughs> But I don't know updates. It's a it, it's a uh, kind of a hate hate relationship. <laughs> I don't like them, but I understand why they happen. Okay. Um. Let's see if this. Okay, so this command. Okay, this is interesting. So last time when I had FreeCAD point one eight working, or installed, I mean the OpenSCAD workbench would crash with an error of some kind. It looks like it's actually working okay here. So I kind of wonder what happens if I do this. Um, if I have a look at my RPI design file and just open the SCAD file directly, what, what happens? That's the question. Um, design. Here we go. It's doing something. Oop. Uh, look at that. Okay, that's uh, that's extremely promising, and it actually simplifies things just a bit. It doesn't permanently solve. Uh, every issue so what I mean by this is um, I do know there are still some incompatibilities between OpenSCAD features and FreeCAD for example I think Minkowski's sum isn't done at all or is done differently in FreeCAD so you get model inconsistencies however if I avoid certain features uh, I think I can get a one-to-one -one output and for the Raspberry Pi, it's basically all going to be simple um, prismatic shapes, which should all be totally fine. Like, I don't need a ton, if any, chamfering or filleting. If I do, I can, I can come up with systems that should work okay. But anyway. I think I'm ready to start playing around with this. And the first thing that makes sense to model is the um, the actual board itself. And that's, uh, that's where I'll get going. Okay, so let's do this uh, one little bit here. It's going to say, how many of those Minkowski calculations will you need for a pie case? Yeah, um, basically none. The thing that Minkowski is useful for a lot is um, and I, so I even don't like doing this this way because of um, incompatibilities anyway but uh, Minkowski I forget if I have to do it like this uh, Minkowski is useful for quick fillets. They're they're. Um, I think this will work. Yeah. So uh, you can see this sphere kind of adds onto the shape. Um, I think that'll work. Yeah, so you can you can uh, kind of give a nice quick fillet to a thing. You can do it with a cylinder as well. Maybe even a circle. I wonder if a nope. Oh, 
okay, so it has to be something like that. So you can use it for stuff like that. So you could see how um, you might want to be able to do that. So for example, you can see this curve on the pi here. There's a fillet right on the corners of, of the, um, the actual plate. So fillets are very, very common in mechanical designs, right? Um, they are basically 100% necessary for stress reductions and all that sort of stuff. However, there are ways around this. You don't need a Minkowski to be able to do that. Should be fine. While I'm at it though, I do wanna see if I'm actually correct. Let's open that up again. So right now there is a Minkowski going on. It's a calculation for rounding edges. Not quite. It's a little, um, it's, uh, let's see if I can explain it succinctly. A Minkowski sum, I have, a, I'm going to draw a little picture on my uh, trusty uh, iPad. And I'll show you what what's up with a Minkowski. Uh, let's see. Do 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 do. So uh, Minkowski is not specifically for fillet stuff, but it is extremely useful for it because of how it works. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll illustrate very briefly, hopefully. Uh, is my little screen share swap gonna work here? I have no signal. I've lost, well, that's not the right one. <laughs> I want this to work. Apparently it's not gonna work. Shoot. Oh, there it is. There it is, okay. All right, oh, come on, it'll get back there. There we go. Okay, so Minkowski sum, sorry about the delay. So uh, I'll do a 2D case here cause it's quick and easy. So I've got my two shapes that I want to sum. So this is the first one, it's a box, right? And then this here is the other shape that I wanna sum. What it basically ends up doing is drawing something like this. It takes shape number two, places it at a position on shape number one and drags Loosely speaking, it drags it around like this, around the contour of the first shape, thus creating, it's like if you imagine a brush pulling along the outline of the first shape, you end up with this final shape that's gonna look like this. Right? So the reason I say it's not specifically for rounding edges is because there's no, uh, there's no necessity that this is a round shape. You could make it a uh, diamond shape, you could make it any complicated thing and it'll do 
this basic operation and it operates in 3d as well that's why a sphere behaved a certain way so if I wanted to do a cube for some reason this will also create a this will also give a result it just doesn't mean anything to do it with a cube it's just kind of pointless right uh, it should so you, you can see I don't know if you saw that oh you didn't see that because I'm not sharing the right <laughs> I'm not sharing the right screen. That's my bad. Sorry about that. Right. So here, uh, what I was just showing, if I do a sphere again, right, it drags the sphere around the entirety of the, of the shape, thus adding the sphere volume to the outer part of that whole volume. If I make this a cube, it's going to be squared edges because a cube pulled along a cube is going to be the same. If I do this, rotate it um, 45 degrees on one axis, it will change how it looks. It gives it a chamfer. Uh, and if I rotate it you can see how like it's it's not necessarily intuitive either right if you look here oh no sorry that's because apologies that's because I'm uh, I have to do degrees to radians there we go now it's even but if I uh, rotate this on a different axis it'll change the chamfers orientation there you go but it's a little bit hard hard to put it into words but I understand it conceptually yeah it, there's a lot of geometry math and concepts that just that are super hard to explain but can make a lot of sense once you kind of if you put an animation to it or put a, a simplified diagram to it you can kind of understand geometry in a more um, conceptual way and it con it, it sometimes can make it a little more concrete at least in my experience that's been how I uh, learn geometry concepts a little bit is trying to actually diagram it out and figure it out spatially is very helpful but anyway in general Minkowski uh, you run there's uh, things you if you're gonna use it to add champers and fillets and stuff you have to be careful like imagine if you look at the width of this shape look how it changes if I take the Minkowski away you see how it shrunk the Minkowski you have to be very careful to make sure that the final resulting shape is the dimension that you actually want if I wanted this cube to stay at 30, 30, 30, and then I add a sphere to it of four, the actual dimension of this is going to be 34 because it's half the sphere on either side. So if I want the final resulting shape to be 30, I actually have to make it 28. And then that shape should be 30. Let's double check that's true. With another cube. Oops. No, yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm even wrong about this. Maybe it has to be the full four. I can't remember. Sorry. I've lost the plot. Oh, okay. So you, you can see there I was even wrong about the dimensions you'd have to cut off. But point is... You can use Minkowski for stuff like this, but you have to be aware of the modifications it actually does to the shape you're, you're giving it. 
whereas in other modern CAD things, adding a fillet to an edge uh, does not it doesn't change the the uh, dimension of the shape itself except for at that fillet portion so it behaves differently than you might initially expect is really all so i'm going to avoid that for um oh sorry before i avoid that i am curious i was going to go over here and reload the file so let's do that and just see if i'm right about the minkowski thing in FreeCAD, I think I am. I don't think this will work properly. Because there's a Minkowski there. Certainly taking its time. Well. I'm going to let that go. I will be right back. Let that run for a second. Right, well, I think uh, this isn't really worth waiting around for. This free CAD uh, seems to be crashed, so let's uh, force quit. <laughs> I don't want to report anything, I'll just leave it be. Let's uh, open it up again, have it ready to go for... Um, Uh, when I'm a little further along with the model here. So we'll just wait till it boots and then we'll get into this again. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get some of the basics in place here. Let's do um, plate. We'll call it the plate. Um, I want to also do Let's get the assembly portion in place here. Let's put this down there. And we'll 
just do, I th I'm pretty sure we can just list, yeah, that, that should work. All right, so let's do def plate as, a let's do this, cube of dimension, Uh, here's the thing. Do I just use inches or do I use millimeters? I kind of want to use millimeters because I like that better. Hmm. Yeah, 56 millimeters versus some fractional or some weird uh, decimal place inch value. We'll use millimeters this time, I like that. So it's 56 by, is the RPI, I don't know what country it's developed in. Is it European or American or other by 85? I'm only curious because if it were developed in an American company, I would have imagined it to have millimeter, or pardon me, inch measurements. I don't know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's about one and a half millimeters thick. And we'll put it through color. Um, I'm going to give myself a little utils thing here. I'm going to define color a little differently here as call. That should be okay. That's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. RGB. Have to run, get some stuff to repair your lawnmower. Won't be back. Have a good weekend. Yeah, Mike, thanks for tuning in. Good luck repairing your lawnmower. Have a great weekend, and I will see you around at some future time. Hopefully, soon, you'll be able to click that little uh, subscribe button. <laughs> anyway, have a great weekend, Mike. Thanks, as always, for participating in the stream. Alrighty, so we've got RGB, uh, and we'll just pass oh no I have to do this um, it has to be like this color yeah let's do it like this RGB and a block which is exactly how it should be good right a smarter way to do this, right? Apply partial Color. I think I might be overcomplicating this as usual, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, let's map Yeah, sure. R G B two five five. Um, does this make any sense? I'm not sure it does. Let's see what happens though. All right, let's try color this thing. 
I don't think this is going to work. Oh, it did. Sweet. Okay, perfect. So let's get um, uh, let's do something like this. Um, circuit board green. Please. There we go. I don't know why that was so tricky. This is such a big deal. Seventeen one zero two zero should be fine. Let's make it ten. Ah, that's kind of ugly. <laughs> ah, we're not in the. We're not here to make it beautiful. We're here to make it useful. All right. So now, what I actually want to do is come up with a way to address the fillets because that does matter a little bit anyway. So to do that, so it looks like they're two and a half millimeter fillets. So I want to make a filleting tool, fillet tool. And the smart way to do this is, I don't know. <laughs> I have an idea and I'm gonna pull a different project up to start working on this particular idea. So we'll do dev SCAD drawing and we'll open up the line tool, okay? because this is gonna be the basis of how I implement the fillet tool. So it's gonna have a from to and radius, that's all good. And essentially that's gonna be It should form the basis of the cutting tool, right? Except what I need is right now this creates a well I can I can demonstrate with uh, fillet let's go from zero zero two zero zero thirty. Mm, yeah, thirty's fine. With a radius of ten. Okay. That'll just make a cylinder. It should just make a cylinder. Uh, ooh, no. Oh, wait. Something has gone wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I need a few things here. I need a distance function, which I don't have in this particular context. Bummer. I can get it though. That's not a problem. I can do it. I can do that with this. Distance please 
right let's do this into utils because I want this to be self-contained more or less I think it's okay to do this Part of me wonders if there's a better way to handle these kinds of um, functions that I use a lot like this, but they don't, I don't know, like uh, do I want a basic utilities library that I use in a lot of different contexts? I kind of don't think so because it makes it a little harder to like uh, put them out as standalone libraries, right? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it today, though. All right, what's the issue here? This is still wrong. There we go. Right, so I don't, there's a few things I don't need with this function. I don't need, well, first of all, let me just check. Here, I've got, well, I can do a few things. I, I don't need the color at all, so let's get that out of here. So that makes that one step easier. I also don't need this. if equal from two, I'm gonna get rid of that check because it makes no sense with a fillet anyway. I'm not gonna make our optional like that, it's gonna be like this. And I don't need this let. Okay, so here we just change this like that. Okay, so we're getting there. Let's also make this just uh, 50, so it calculates a little bit faster. That looks good. Um, these spheres we also don't need, so um, all this is gonna be don't need that, nor do I need that. So it's going to be a straight cylinder. Now, this should, if I say 50, 50 like that, yeah, it works. It turns it, it puts it along whatever um, line you specify. So that's helpful. And what it should do. Next is I will have to think about the orientation problem in a bit, but for the time being, I'm comfortable with something like this mm, no nope. change it we'll do it this way yeah so this becomes this That should all still work, right? 
um, this cylinder is going to be inside a difference. Oops, uh, here and a cube of a certain height like this R R R R and um, norm. R2 oh, I must have messed something up uh oh Oh, here, I know why. There we go. It's promising. This might actually be a lot harder than I thought because this. Oops, oops. This might, you know, maybe it's fine. Maybe it should be okay for um, ortho, ortho, orthonormal lines. Should be fine. got yes that should work Let's do um, three times. Yeah, it doesn't need to, that should be fine. That's okay. And then the height here, let's actually just do this norm times two. Okay, there we go. We've got the excuse me, start of a cutting tool here. And we can adjust it with a radius changer like that, or a radius changer, what am I talking about? We can provide it a new radius value. And now the next little bit to work on is the uh, cutting the quadrants away so that it's just a singular, fill it like that. The obvious thing here is that this actually only works for uh, 90 degree edges, but it's a start and it should be okay. Uh, for now anyway, it should be good. Um, we can add in features later on that you could specify um, planar angles or something like that, but I, let's not overcomplicate it. Most of the fillets I need are on 90s anyway. Um, so let's just go with that and, and uh, be happy with the result like that. It's not a big deal. So uh, we just need to make a few more things here. This cube will translate. What's the best way to do this? Let's see for a second. 
Um, oh, let's. I think this should work just fine. Okay, cube translate some value. Got to close the difference there. Okay, so this translate will be um, by default. It's going to be along x. So let's do negative x. Uh, it actually is going to be r times negative 1.5, which is half of 3. Let's see if that does what I think it does. It should cut it in half. It didn't work. And the reason, oh, uh, maybe it did. Yes, it did. It's just weird looking. And that's because this can be like this. Uh, and this can be norm times two. Oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. So that slices that bit away. And let's slice one more of those the other way, like this. Perfect. OK, there we go. We've got a slicing tool. Now the last, now the, hmm. What do we do? Does it work if I do something like this? Does it work if I do this? It looks promising. So using the fillet tool, let's try. Oops. Uh, adjust our plate a little bit here with a little more elegance. So we'll do difference. Let's uh, let um, uh, length, width, width, length, thickness, little weird oh, that's okay and the difference is some cube width length T this whole thing is gonna have a color so do this yeah and it's gotta be Fill it from two, and then the radius is two and a half. I don't like how I've done this. Uh, it's fine. Let's not worry about it. Radius, two and a half. Okay, so the color is going to be some value like that. The fillet itself, right? It's um, position is going to be half width. Yeah, so let's let's do one, just one fillet for now. It's going to be the width divided by two, the length divided by two, and let's do thickness times two and the next point of the fillet will be negative two. Oh, I must have messed something up here. Oh, 
was off by oh yes of course uh... right so the cylinder itself is centered at the point specified so that's not quite what I need I need to adjust it inward by the radius, right? Which means uh, what I'd like to happen this here has to be translated a little bit. R is this gonna work it's not gonna work I have to translate it before I have to translate it yeah it this might not work let's see oops oh come on It has to be done before I like pivot it and stuff like that. I'm not sure if it'll work. Well, shoot, I might have overcomplicated things <laughs> as one does sometimes. Well, maybe. Maybe it's fine. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's exactly what I need. Let's go. If I turn it into a difference, turn this down to five, something like that. What's going on here? Oh, it's in the wrong position. Why is that? Um, confused by that I've done something wrong hmm Okay, I don't know. I don't want to think about that too much right now, though. Okay, so that's a really goopy looking fillet. That's pretty good. So I'm going to 
finish, I'm gonna keep adding the fillets around the corners and I'm gonna see what it looks like in FreeCAD. I think this might not actually work, in which case I'll have to go back to the drawing board on this. And then maybe instead of worrying too much about fillets, I'll stub in some squares and blocks so this at least gives me a really good starting point. Fillets are not, that's better than nothing, right? So let's go ahead and do that for a little bit here. So let's finish up the fillets here. Okay, so we've got positive X, positive Y. Let's do this next one, negative X, positive Y, which means I have to do this and rotate it. that I think that should be okay uh, let's make them a union so that I can see where I'm putting things first Ooh, that's some bad news oh um, I don't know why that happened. If I get rid of the rotate, does it end up in the right spot? Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Well, that's, of course, that makes perfect sense. I've got to do this differently. Yeah, of course. Well, let's do this then. Fillet tool. Just trying to think about the right. Mm, this is going to be easier if I do something like this. Just give it a radius. And it's very simple. This thing centered. Uh, we got to give it a radius and a length, I guess. A length and a radius. L radius and length, like that. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, uh, norm can just be turned into length. Length like this. And then a cube is some radius and some norm, some length L. Da -da -da. That's it. Okay, so if I do fillet tool, Let's change this up. Fillet tool, 2.5 is the radius. Let's give it a height of four, why not? And leave it there for now. Does it show up? It does. So using that is probably a little easier to uh, just um, move it, do the same thing, but just move it like like myself like this fillet tool 
translate it right to the position I had before, zero on Z. So translate it to uh, width divided by two and length divided by two. That should pop it right here. So using that same approach, I should now be able to apply a rotate to it as well. Uh, zero, zero, zero in this case, but I'll leave that in there for copy paste options. Okay, so the second one, let's do rotate 90 degrees to radians, 90 and negative in the x direction should be good there. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, now 180, it's negative in both x and y, should be this corner. Yep. And then the last one, rotate 270 and negative y positive x should put it there so now if I just difference these there we go actual radius okay that's better um, it's a little more it, it's a little more obvious what's happening instead of doing that uh, complicated fillet thing there I can control the orientation the way I want nice and simple let's see if that will open nicely in free CAD it might it might not we'll have a look uh, let's go open it up and try ba -ba -ba, our pie hopefully we get decent looking fillets out of this yeah there we go that's exactly what I wanted to see no issues at all. Oh, sweet. That's perfect. Okay. Now we can move on to something a little bit different. What I'm thinking would be kind of fun. Well, what's a good idea? What should I do next? Let's see. I want to do the pins, the GPIO pins here. And I'll do that in a new section. So I'm going to do def pin. I'm also then going to do def uh, base. And then I'll do def pin uh, group. Those should be the three, I guess that yeah, that should be fine. So the pin itself, probably quite simple, right? It's gonna just be uh, basically a cube. So let's do color. Sorry, let's do it this way. Cube of dimensions. Da -da -da. Zero point six five. Zero point six five and a height of eleven point four five millimeters. Okay, then color that like a gold color something like I don't know don't do this to me give me like uh, 255 212 128 
That's good. Pin. Oh yeah, these won't these won't work without closing them like this. Okay, there's a pin. <laughs> very basic, very nice. So the pin base is a different piece. So the pin, right, is the shiny pin parts here. Sorry for the focus issue there. And then the base is the black plastic part here. So the pin and the base will become one unit and then I'll use those together to make the entire array, the pin array. Maybe a better name for it. Uh, right, so the base is a very similar process to the pin. It's just a different size cube. height 2.08 and the width a little harder to measure it actually the base is Call it so 4.95, we'll call it five millimeters is the double width of it. So two and a half is just a single piece. And the color, let's make it way darker. So 30, 30, 35 should look okay. Pin and base. This is gonna be wrong. That's not the right uh, positioning of them, but it's a good start. Should be all right, really. So pin center to pin center would be approximately two and a half, which is close to what I'm seeing here. So it, it like it's really boring to put on the screen really, but you take your caliper and you just measure your stuff, right? And you get a visual on the screen here. And it's going to be a bit finicky. It's not going to be exact, but you're going to have to kind of use intuition as to what the exact measurements would be. And very often designers will use nice round numbers, right? So two and a half is better than 2.431, blah, 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 right? Or 2.58, you know, but it's a judgment call sometimes. So I'm just trying to think about the right way to do this section. Um, let's actually make the base a double. So along Y, I'm gonna make it the double because that is kind of how the pins are actually, they're on like a double sort of thing I don't know if that's making any sense anyway like a sing so what I'm gonna do is make up the pin array I'm gonna make two pins uh, 
yeah, I'm going to make a base and two pins as a single unit, and then I'm going to array it just along uh, X to get the full set. That's the idea. That's the whole idea. Very simple. <laughs> okay, so with pin array, I'm going to do a let uh, unit B. Let's also, ooh, I know, I've got, I have to make one change to the plate. Right now the plate's center is at the center. I want the plate top to be at zero height. So I wanna actually take this whole thing and translate it down. Zero, zero, uh, by half the thickness, like this. That gives me the ability, or that gives me a simpler reference for all of the things that are gonna be mounted right on top. So by that I mean here, now this base, I can translate up that and then the pin can also translate up by some factor which would be um, three millimeters should be about right okay So a single unit is going to be a union between two pins being translated. Mm. Whoops. One point. Like that. And a base. Uh, this should be pin base. Like this. close. Got to do this one negative. And now if I uh, undo the plate here, this should look about right in terms of heights. That is about the extrusion. That does work approximately. If you're looking at the pins through the bottom of the board, that visually looks about right. So we'll go with that. And how many pins, how many are arrayed across? One, two, three, four, five. Twenty. So for X range, uh, 20 translate um, uh, two and a half times X right yeah 
Oh, and then uh, apply union to that whole thing. It's pretty good. Might want to move the origin point of the array but maybe not. I'm not too worried about that. Although, maybe I should be. If I array it along Y, actually, if I were to adjust, I wouldn't have to rotate it. Oh, I'm not gonna worry about it though. Well, let's now start to put it in the right position. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Pin array, uh, rotate it first, actually. I do wonder if I should center it. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, I will, I will. Made a decision, translate this whole thing. Ooh, that's ugly. Let's um, write this just a bit differently. thread that through apply union, which then gets threaded through translate. There we go. And the translate here is just gonna be, the only, I only have to move it, um, in negative X. So it has to be, x times 20, uh, not x, um, two and a half. Am I doing this in a, I, I'm gonna just put the actual measurement value in there instead of multiplying values. Yeah, so it's going to just be 25 minus 25. So I'll just put that in there. Should be fine. So that centers the uh, that gives the origin of the array itself. Oh, maybe that didn't work. Um, So that should, yeah, there we go. Now it's centered. Ooh, is it though? It's actually not. Um, it's off by, why is that off? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, it's the right number. Oh, it's off by half of one of those values. So it has to be minus uh, 1.25, right? So it's gotta be 23.75, right? Yep, yeah, there we go. Right, so now, rotated to the correct orientation. Now I just need to translate it to its final position on the board, which is going to be
half the width minus well let's okay so let's start by putting it on let's focus on the x direction first right and we can do that simply um, the total width of the it's 56 so 25 6 7 28 28 we'll put it exactly halfway over right so that's obviously not what we need so we need to bring it back in uh, two and a half so that'll be 25.5 should line it up to the edge yeah and then if I measure it it's if I had to guess it's a millimeter it's 1.2 in from that let's just get a final check on that it's a little hard to say I'm gonna go with 1.25 so minus another one and a quarter so 24 and a quarter puts it correctly in the X position. All right, so now in the Y position, I need to do half of the width, which is 86 divided by, oh, 85 divided by two is 42 and a half minus 25, so 42 and a half minus 25 is what? What's, come on brain. Calculator. Seventeen and a half should have been able to do that in my head, but alas, here I am. <laughs> Seventeen point five. That's fine. So that puts it right on the edge, and then this is offset a little further because oh, I should put the holes. I'm thinking out loud to myself. Okay, so that seven point three. Oh man, is it really? Seven point two. So this minus seven point two is a little easier. That's ten point three. Probably ten point two five is really. It's a nicer number to to look at. Okay, so if you look, if you compare. That's looking pretty good. Happy with that. Now I realize, so I have to go back to the to the plate and I'm gonna actually add these mount holes in there right now uh, because those are obviously important. <laughs> um, I should probably even, yeah, okay. Well, let's uh, hop to it then with the plate cuts for a second so it's actually pretty easy to add it in I just need to make cylinder so there's fillet radius which now I'm gonna fillet R Fillet radius. Oh, and this one. Plate base. 
fillets. Uh, mount holes. There's four of those. And the radius of a mount hole is 2.7 divided by 2, uh, 1.35. Whole radius 1.35 five please there we go so that's got whole radius and the height is just going to be uh, two times the thickness of the plate and all I need to do is translate them into position so it's uh, first make sure that works Should be a hole right in the middle. Yep, good. Okay, so let's do this. So the offset is 3.25 from the very edge. So this one, for example, I can do these. This result minus 3.25. This result minus 3.25. That should put it in a corner. Uh, did I? What did I mess up here? Um, Oh, I was too far. Uh, it's not. A, it's also on the wrong side. It has to be on this side. Um, that'll be this, like that. Yeah, that looks correct. Then the next one is going to be in almost the same position, except this. It's going to put it up here. Yeah. Now, finally, the last two. This one is going to be half the length the other way, plus not 3.25, but a bit of a bigger offset. Twenty three point two five, which means this last one should have that. And then this should be back to this. That should put them, um, yeah, that's looking good. Now, I'll be right back.
So there's another thing on the board yet I want to add. Um, around the mount holes, there's this yellow color. It's like um, the actual um, green layer of the board itself isn't. It doesn't exist around that mounting hole. I'm pretty sure that's for I don't know conductivity or whatever reasons. Anyway, I'm gonna model that in there. Just, I guess, to visually indicate us the sort of safe region. Um, I think that makes sense to do. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Pretty fair. Yeah, so let's uh, add that little bit in. It's got a radius of three. So simplest way to add that, hmm, it's probably well, if I want the color to match, let me think about this for just a second. Um, I might do I'll just do a little slice. So uh, by that I mean, well, let's experiment with just one first. I know. Make two cylinders inside one here and so this right doesn't have whole radius it's gonna have three the height let's make the height one no let's make it two and then this cylinder has to be translated up Um, yeah, so zero, zero, one is not going to be enough, but let's start with that. So here, yeah, so all I have to do is adjust, well, let's actually, let, let's make it one. If we go up by one, so it should have a very shallow, yeah. Uh, I don't know what's better to do this one, one point three. This has to be one point two at least, or so one point two five makes it disappear because. Um, The cylinder, the cylinder that's one millimeter tall is centered around its height. So moving the cylinder up to one would have a half millimeter cut down. And then if you get rid of, if you move it up by a quarter, then it doesn't cut. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. Anyway, let's do 1.1 like this. 
So then all I have to do, oh, I also, there is also that on the underside. So let's achieve the same thing by doing negative. That's unfortunately hard to see. I wonder, can I, I don't know if this will make a difference. Uh, just picking a random color. I don't think that'll color this. It does not. Yeah. Hmm. You know what, I'll leave it for now. The way it is is fine. So then I can take this. Put it here. And then these can all be replaced with mount hole like that. It's looking pretty good. All right, for the time being, that's looking okay. So I wanna pick one more thing to model before I go for the day. I don't want it to be too complicated because I'm feeling a little bit ready to have a weekend. So what would be a good candidate? Um, I know, well, I kind of know. It might be fun to make a parametric heat sink so that I can um, model different heat sink types. That would be kind of neat. Let's do that. Let's go with something like that. So let's now make, so we've got GPIO, oops. It's also a small, in array is this whole thing for only two pieces so small pin array is um, I don't know what these two pins or these four pins do here I'm sure they're Sure, there's something useful, but I don't know what. I love the Raspberry Pi, but there's still a lot that I don't know about it. Anyway, no big deal. Let's just position it. Oh, also. Uh, the total translate here is actually going to be um, 1.25, I think. The rotate, actually, we don't need for the small pin array. And let's start with a 0, 0 position of this thing. Save that. We should see it right in the middle. That's good. And it, I believe, should have a same position in the Y direction as the mounting holes, oops, which would be 
pretty much this comma mm -hmm. so that should I think put it here Uh-oh. Oh. So there are some global variable names that I should put in a state atom or well uh, in a, in something like a like an atom. But I'm not going to worry about it for now. <laughs> this is also wrong. Six eighty five. Hey, Right, this actually has to be half, yeah. Looks correct. Yeah, that's good. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so parametric heat sink. Start with something. Heat sink. Okay, so heat sink is going to take a uh, base width, length, width, height, and fins, and In thickness and that should be okay so we'll start we'll union union a bunch of stuff Right, so we'll union uh, the base. Oh, uh, we need length, width, height, base thickness, number of fins, fin thickness. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of okay. So we'll do um, cube.
Let me check something for a second. does work center false but that's actually not what I want I just want yeah okay that's fine I don't need or uh, let's do heat sink uh, let's give a sample width height and all that stuff so let's do 15 15 let's do a height of Six point five total height, and let's do um, one and a half uh, is the thickness of the base, and the thickness of a single fin is point eight, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fins. Let's do a point eight. Right, so I wanna I wanna give these name these parameters names because this is just gobbledygook, right? Um, but let's build this out and then go from there. Okay, so this base cube, this cube is just gonna be the base, so it's going to be. This cube translated to some position. All right, and it's going to be um, the height is going to be the base thickness. Length and width are like that. So to translate it to the right position, I need zero, zero, x, and y, and then the height position is going to be I want it to I want its base it just has to go up by half the base so plus BT divided by 2 that's a good start yep that looks right let's color it as well um, That's too dark. Oh, of course, because I changed. Yeah, right. Um, 100, 100, 130. That's a little weird, but that's fine. OK, so that's the base. I want to union it with apply union. Actually, do I need to do that? Let's just try a for loop directly. How about that? So for um, x range n f number of fins. What you need to do is translate some amount on X and then somewhere like that. This isn't going to be right, but it's a start. Oh, I didn't translate anything. <laughs> This cube is going to be fan, uh, fin thickness times the width and the width of the thing. And the height. Yeah, so 
So we're close. We're getting close. That's good. Then it's a matter of applying a translate to the whole thing appropriately. So translate it in Z plus half the height in Y zero and in X negative half of the length. Yeah, it's close. So um, if there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the gap is not correct. And that's because I just hard coded two as a guess, of course. That makes sense. So this amount here has to be um, NF uh, width divided by NF. Is that right? Let's see. go. That should do. Not quite. And why is that? Hmm. I must have done the wrong. Oh, this has to be the length, not the width. Yeah? Yes. Okay. There we are. That's pretty good. Um, should I add f the fillets in there? I'm not going to for now. I'm going to leave that. That's looking okay. Let's um, bring this down to two and see what happens. Yeah, three, that's funny, uh, nine, eight, beautiful. Oh, uh, there's one little problem, and that is this thickness is too much now. I need to adjust. Let transformed width be the width minus FT, the fin thickness. Should be actually, oh yeah, no, no, that should be right. So the range number of fins is fine. This be L. Let me translate it XL. And then you do one final thing, which is the cube.
There we go. That's correct. And I'll double check that that's correct by doing cube This cube is 16 millimeters across, and that lines up with, I mean, okay, so we'll give a little tiny floating point error there, but let's be, let's be happy with that. I'm happy with that. Okay, um, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to have a good weekend. I hope everyone has a good weekend. That's all I gotta say. I'll be back next week with some more streaming, some more 3D modeling, some more SVG work, maybe some more animating. Who knows? I'll have to see how it goes. That's all I've got. Have a good one, everyone.